I'm Rod Link. Uh, have been asked to do a demo on inside out turning. I uh, just started an inside out turning uh, about a little over a year ago. And I turned one, and the guy I was working with said I ought to bring it to work and show it to the lady we was working for. And I did, and she bought it on the spot and ordered six more. And that so started my experience with inside out turning. Uh, it has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it immensely. And there's just no end to what you can do with it. It's, it's rather simple. Uh, but there are a few things that are crucial that you get down in order to, to get them where they're really what you want. So we'll just start now and kind of go through some of those steps that I go through. Uh, the first thing you got to do is uh, have four sticks. Uh, it's best if they're all the same size uh, and square. Uh, you make sure they're smooth. I, a lot of times, will take these and run them through either the joiner or uh, sanding, depending on how far off they are, to uh, get them down to size to where they, they work. And you can use, I, I do a lot where, as you can see here, I uh, have two walnut and two maple. Uh, you can do, now this one I got here is uh, all maple. Or no, this one's all cherry. This is cherry on here. Uh, so you can do whatever you want. But it, it just all makes different things. And what I try to do is put these where, um, with the uh, different kinds of wood, the grain doesn't really match because they're, they're going to be different grains and different woods. But if you're doing one like this one, then I try to get where the grain compensates and, and uh, accents one another. But you get these together like this. And the first thing I do after doing that, <clears throat> take this one back out. And I don't know if you can see it. I'll be able to see it there. But on the end, each one of these separate sticks I mark. And I got one, two, three, and four. And this way, and I have them at the inside corner of each one. And I do that purposely so when I can turn them, after I get through turning the inside, I can keep them in the same relationship to one another that they are when I turn it the first time. Because you do make two, two separate turnings doing this. So we'll put this in and uh, it's something that you can pick up rather quickly. I uh, wasn't too long to where I felt comfortable doing this. The first couple times I was a little uh, nervous doing it, but it's got now where it's not so bad. <clears throat> and it's it just, uh, as my brother said, he's a remodeling contractor. He says, a lot of people are, admire how good a work I put out. He says, it's really not how good a work, it's how good you are at hiding your mistakes. And that, that kind of uh, carries through here as well. Uh, so I get the, the four pieces glued together. Now what I do in gluing them, them together, I will get them matched. And as you can see on this one, I've got paper here. And I use the, the brown paper method of gluing them together. I just put a little dab of glue on the end of each one. And then put brown, uh, I just use grocery sack paper. Cut a little square there, put it there. Squeeze them together, let it dry for at least... 30, 40 minutes, and then the other thing I do at that point is I take some uh, scotch shipping tape and wrap around that so that it will not uh, come undone when we're turning it, because I only let it set about 30 minutes, and then I start turning it. The pieces I've got here today, I glued up yesterday, so they've, they've been setting for a while, so we'll see how they come apart when we get ready to do that. Um, We will uh, start and do a little turn. Oh, about messed up one thing here. Uh, also, I make at the beginning, depending, I kind of have an idea in my mind how big of inside opening I want to have. 
And on this particular one, we're going to have two inches. So I marked that out. And I... Uh, Mark that around here so I have an idea of where I'm at when I'm doing it. Also, if I seem a little bit nervous today, uh, it's because this is the first time I've ever done anything like this before. So I might be a little nervous, but we'll get through it. Now, the one I'm going to be turning here will just be a... a uh, round opening or an oval opening. Yeah. Forgot to put my mask on. Kind of shows you how nervous I am. Kind of keep turning this, stopping periodically just to see where we're at. And as you can see here, I've got the corners cut down now, but we've got to get it to where the uh, flat sides of this is decreased. And the, however far down you take it here on this flat side will determine the width of the hole when we get through. Keep working them back and forth and Yeah, we're getting it down there. Oh, looks like our opening will be about a half inch or so on this one. I'm going to kind of dress that up a little bit, and then we'll have it good enough. As in all wood turning, one of the uh, crucial parts of turning that uh, a gentleman told me when I first started was uh, the sanding. And uh, that was a, a fellow by the name of Sergeant. And he said, all your wood turning, 
will de- be, uh, how nice it is will be how much you sand and how well you sand. None of us like to sand, but it's, it's what makes it what it is. So once I get it turned to the shape I want, we just do a little sanding. Get it shape. I kind of forget myself. I get involved in the turning and forget to be talking to you guys, but we'll try to get it where I can turn and talk at the same time here. Yeah, that's pretty close. Now what I would do at this time, if I were, were turning this one out, I would uh, apply a finish in here of some kind, which some people will uh, paint it, some people will stain it, uh, what I use most of the time is just mineral oil and beeswax, and it puts a nice uh, dull satin finish on it that I enjoy myself, and that's what I use in there. If I were turning this at home, that's what I would be doing at this time, would be just put a light coat of oil in there, and then it would be done. And what we would do then <clears throat> is take this out of the lathe. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just... Take these back apart. As you can see, they come apart rather easily. Okay, now this is where the uh, numbers on here come into play. I've got sticks one and two here, and I've got sticks three and four here. Okay, now what I do here is just turn these 180 degrees where the, my marking is out the outside corner. Do this to all four of them. Do it just like that. And then what I do at this time, I glue the four of these back together. Uh, and, and this time, instead of putting just a dab of glue out at the end, I coat from where the opening is out each direction with glue Spread it out, but I do keep it back away from my opening here a little ways because the last thing you want is glue running out into your inside opening because once it runs out in there, it's very difficult to get it, get it out and, and uh, not show. And that would detract from the, the looks of your uh, turning. So we would glue that back together, and at that point, it would be like this one. This is one I've already glued back together. And this one did set a couple days and it got where a couple of the chunks of the wood came out, but that won't hurt. We'll take care of that in the turning. But this is, is what you do then. This is the next step where you get ready to uh, turn it there. And let me check my notes to make sure there's nothing else I've left out. Uh, no, I think we're doing okay. So I'm going to put this back in the lathe then at this time. And one thing I do too in doing this, I just happen to think of this, and I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera or not, but right in the very center of each end, I take a, a spade bit and just make a little hole there so that our, our tips on our uh, lathe will not split these apart. And one of the things that's, that's crucial when you're gluing these back together is that you get the the cross of the wood even together. That way when you get through turning, your uh, piece will come out uniform at the points and, and all four points will come right to together at the, at the end as you'll see. There we go. Okay, now the thing with this, another thing with this, there isn't really any such thing as making a huge mistake. It's just uh, the way I turn these things is I let the wood kind of dictate to me what it's going to be. Uh, as you can see here in a little bit, he's going to show you some ones I've made, and every one of them is different. Uh, there is no right or wrong in it. You just turn 
turn it and let it be what it is. Now one thing you do want to be careful when you're turning or working with this wood now is that all times keep your fingers away from these openings and keep your chisel away from the opening. When you're, you're going over this portion of your work, go very lightly. You don't want to um, have the chisel slip through there or the last thing in the world, you don't want to get a finger caught in there. It would be disastrous. Also, as you get down to where it's, it's done, and I'll show you in a little bit, it can get very sharp there. And you can kind of see the shadow there, or the ghost as we call it. Uh, looking through the, the openings there and that kind of gives you an idea of how thick it's becoming but the thing you, you're looking for is to get it where this portion this flat part right here is all gone and it's perfectly round unless of course you're wanting to leave it square which is I do I have made a couple of them that way where I I left this flat on the four sides uh, but sometimes that, that doesn't work out like in this one. This one's already flat gone here, so it wouldn't work where you could do that. You can actually hear the difference in the wood as you go over that opening. Kind of go along at this stage, you kind of just get a feel for what you want the thing to look like in the end and uh, go toward that nature. And these really don't take very long at all to turn, except that you do have to take two days to. When I do the final glue up for the one I have here, I always let it set overnight and cure because there's, there's no uh, tape you can put on this to help hold it together or anything like that. It's just the glue is doing it.
And we're getting real close to the end. We're going to take the tailstock back out of the way now. Yeah, I think I better ring the tailstock back up. I got some more to do there. Uh, when I stopped it, I realized there was some flat sides here yet. So I need to take these down just a little bit more. And I don't think I'm going to get them down far enough to get it flat on this one. I uh, didn't get this one glued up quite square, and two of them. You can see on this one, that right there is getting very, very thin. And if I take that down flat enough to make this side flat, that will break through. So I won't be able to take it clear down. So what I'll have to do is in my sanding, round some of that out that you can cover it up with the sanding and, and get it there. That's about as far as I'm going to be able to go with that. Getting ready here to part the tail end off now. Now we're getting ready to part the whole thing off. There. And it is all turned off. Now what I would have done also if, if I were finishing this clear out, I would have sanded this down before I turned it off. And I forgot to mention that to you ahead of time. But I always sand it down on the lathe. And then I, uh, once getting it sanded down, I come back with my mineral oil and beeswax and apply a, a good liberal coat of that on here. Uh, and then I turn it up real high. I mean, I'll get it up 25, 3,000 RPMs and just take a, a paper towel in the palm of my hand and go under it like this and just take that back and forth to the point it's where it's hot enough that 
I can't hardly hang on to it. And that just drives that oil and stuff into the wood. And uh, it seems to last a long time. I got some that I made a year ago, and uh, they still look quite nice. But this is uh, basically the finished product other than the sanding and the applying of the oil. So um, that's basically it. I don't, anybody has any questions, we'll be glad to entertain those. I'm just going to sh show a few of them I made here. Uh, this one's one that's got a long narrow, but it's also got a taper in the uh, opening here. It's all uh, walnut. I just have a long, slender teardrop on the bottom. One thing I used when I first started, the very first one I made, I went to the hardware store and thought, well, I'll be professional about it, and I made a little screw, or bought a screw, that was screwed down in the top to hang it with. And being who I was, I looked at it, I didn't like it, it made it look commercial. So what I do now is I drill a little bitty hole here in the top, and all these you'll see that are hanging will have a little wire here where I've just took a, a short piece of wire, three, four inches long, bent it over, uh, put one end in the, in the pair of pliers, the other end in the drill chuck, and just wrap it up. And then I drop a little CA glue on it, stick it down the hole, and I use just the wire homemade hanger. So this is, is one of them that I've done. This is one that I just made this last week. Uh, I come up with an idea, and uh, this was the first one I'd done, is where I made a long opening with square at the top and the bottom, put a little notch in the middle so I'd have a cross, and uh, did that with two different woods. Uh, the one thing I would do different in doing this, I would close this opening up where it's not so wide, so the opening here would match the opening here. And uh, again, that's got the little wire thing at the top. I put just a little bead on the bottom of this one. This one is one where it's, it's pretty much uniform. Uh, the sides are, are flat. Here, they both got the same opening at top and bottom. Put a little bit of a different finish on the bottom, and again, got the wire hanger at the top. This is one a little bigger. Uh, everything you've seen so far has all been fairly small sticks. These were, I think these were like an inch, inch and a half square when I started. Uh, I made a, a flat bottom in it so that you could set something in there if you so desired. But I wanted to get the flat bottom and the kind of the cathedral opening at the top with a little different uh, design at the bottom. And then I got the... Uh, uh, to show that you can cover up mistakes. I had one area where, and I don't remember now which one it was, but one of them had a little breakout right here at the corner. So I just took my uh, wood burning wire and took my, my uh, parting tool and made a little notch in here and burnt this down to where it just offset it to where it looks like this is almost free from this. So that it, uh, it's just something a little different and, and unique again. This one is pretty much like most of the rest of them over there. Uh, it's got the oval opening, the same top and bottom, a little teardrop at the bottom with a bead. Uh, this one I did put my initials on, and most of them I do put my initials on before I let loose of them and let them go. But that again is something. And here I have something that's totally different. Uh, when I kind of got through with this, I uh, looked at it and kind of thought, I like that. It's totally different. It's freestanding. Uh, it's got a lid on it. You can turn the lid on, and as you can see, inside there's a, a tea light. You can turn the light off and on, and it is made, it's the kind of tea light that flickers like a, a candle, and it shines down on the tree down in the bottom, and in the evening you can have this on, and it's almost looks like a candle there flickering, with, except it's a tree. One thing I also did with this is the tree is mounted to the bottom with, I don't know if you can see it there, there's a Velcro pad in the bottom and one on the tree. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, you can see the, that, you just put it in, set it up, put it on the micro pad, and you don't worry about it falling out. So that was kind of an, another twist I'd done that I'd made several of them with trees in them or snowmen in them, but uh, I always had trouble with them falling out. And I come up with this, and that was kind of a neat uh, twist and change to that. And uh, that's all I have, I guess. Is there any questions?